Parasite by Darcy Coates, my first Darcy Coates book. So, uh, usually in the horror section of my local bookstore, there you got your typical Clyde Barker, Stephen King, obviously, some Dean Koontz books, but recently I've noticed that there has been significant shelf space uh, dedicated to someone named Darcy Coates, and that whoever Darcy Coates is has a lot of books. And honestly, so many books that I kind of wondered if Darcy Coates was actually a real person, because looking at the copyright dates in the front covers of these books, I noticed that they're all from very recently, like 2016 to present, maybe 2015, but all very new books. And judging by the sheer volume of how many books there are, I was really curious. I was like, is, is Darcy Coates actually an author or is that like a collective pen name that different authors use to, to write under? And it turns out Darcy Coates is real. Um, she is an author from Australia, I believe, and she has just kind of exploded onto the, uh, the horror uh, scene in recent years, as I said. And I wanted to read some of her books, or at least one of her books, because I was like, you know, this woman has a bibliography in the span of like five years that rivals the size of some authors that have been writing for decades. So let's see if there's any quality to the quantity. So I bought this book, Parasite, uh, because this book seemed different from most of the other books there because so many of those books were just like the haunting of insert house name here. It was so many haunted house stories and so many ghost stories. So many ghost stories and, you know, that kind of thing. Cozy horror is how I've heard her fiction described, but I wanted to try something that was a little bit, you know, outside that box, and I saw this book, and it is a science fiction horror book, a la Alien and John Carpenter, The Thing. So I bought this, and I read it, and this book was passable, but just barely. Um, although I will say I did like this book. It's one of those books that you can't really rationally defend, but you kind of like for whatever reason. I did kind of like this book, but I will objectively admit that it was not very good. Uh, but let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about my first Darcy Coates read. So Parasite is not a novel in the traditional sense of the word I thought it was. It's actually a collection of short stories and novellas, uh, all kind of in the sh in a shared universe, all revolving around things called simic parasites, which are creepy, slimy, um, extraterrestrial body snatcher things that are slowly taking over the whole of humanity. And the stories trace from the beginning of the plague to uh, I, not really the end because it leaves it open like there might be a sequel, but it, it, it traces a certain trajectory start to finish. Uh, but this book had a lot of problems. It's not that that kind of setup can't work. It's just that you can't tell somebody the same story numerous times in the same book. That just does not work. Also, this book is so, like, borderline plagiaristic that I'm honestly kind of surprised John Carpenter didn't get, didn't collect royalties off of this, because what this book is is basically an amalgamation of Ridley Scott's Alien, John Carpenter's The Thing, and the Venom symbiote from the Spider-Man comics. You mash all that up, and you get Parasite by Darcy Coates. Because the, the simic parasite, the body snatching thing uh, in this, these, this book, these stories, um, it, it, it functions in the same way that the thing does in John Carpenter's classic movie. It takes over people's bodies and you can't tell them apart uh, at, a, at a glance at least. But it looks like physically the description that she gives of this thing is like the Venom symbiote from Spider-Man. 
Uh, so it's there's nothing new here at all. But that, but again, that's that's not necessarily an indictment because books don't necessarily have to be original to succeed. I think you can take something that's been done before and you know still do it well. This book didn't do that very well though. So the problem is is that these stories are basically, or at least the first three, are basically just the same story over and over again. Uh, the book picks up in the second half. The, the book is divided, like the first half of the book uh, is comprised of like three, what I guess you would call short stories. They're like between 30 and 50 pages in length. And then the second half of the book is comprised of two novellas. And it picks up definitely in the second half. And in, in fact, it redeemed itself in the second half, but just barely. Uh, but the first half of this book is not good at all. Uh, the characters, I honestly cannot, I just finished this book today, and I cannot tell you a single character name from those first three stories. And I would struggle to tell you a character name from the, the latter two novellas, but those were a little bit better. But the first three stories, it's just the same story with different character names. Alien attacks, or alien invades space station, People get turned into body snatcher things, lather, rinse, repeat. It's the same thing over and over. And you just can't do that. Like, you can't tell somebody the same story three times and then expect them to, you know, like that. Uh, but the second half, as I said, gets better. The second, the last two stories are significantly longer than the initial three. And there's a, a decided amount more of character development, although still not a lot. The characters in this book were pretty weak, and very weak in the first three, but passable in the second, in the last two stories in the second half, because there's a little bit of depth to those characters in those last two stories, and not, not by any means a lot, but just enough to where I could tell them apart and to where I actually kind of cared. Uh, but the book never capitalizes on, well, not never, it rarely capitalizes upon its premise. You know, John Carpenter got some really great mileage out of his One of Us is the Monster premise of the thing. You know, that movie is a classic for a reason because it keeps you on your toes. It's freaky. It is grotesque as all hell to look at. And you really don't know who the thing is. Uh, this book tried it a couple times to do that, and there was one time that genuinely did surprise me that I didn't see coming, but by and large, it is wildly predictable, and you can see every reveal coming 10 miles away. Uh, the writing, though, in this book is competent. It's, it's fine. It's not anything to get excited over, but it, it's not clumsy, it's not inept. She did use words well, no, you know, misphrasing or anything. Although, I think this book needed much more editing than what it has because there were a lot of mistakes from typos to entire words being just left out of sentences to a couple of places, or at least one place, where she used the wrong characters' names in the context of the scene where she mixed the characters' names up. Um, this, For a professionally published book, uh, this was kind of shocking. It definitely needed more work. It needed, it needed to be gone over a lot more than what it was because, like I said, there were a lot of mistakes. Uh, but it's, it, it is... Uh, it tries to be scary at certain points, but it really wasn't, except for one scene. There was one single scene in this book that actually was really creepy, and it was kind of just like a here and gone thing, but I'll give credit where credit is due. There was, there, this book did manage to have one scene that was actually really creepy and kind of effective, uh, but as a horror story or stories, this doesn't really succeed all that much, and it, again, it kind of lacks the the mystery of that John Carpenter's The Thing had, because, again, this is ripping so hard on The Thing, it's not even funny, but it doesn't do it well. 
Again, there was like one time where I was actually caught off guard, but the rest of the times you know exactly who the parasite is, and it's so painfully obvious there's no suspense. Um, but I will say this. This book was decidedly PG, and I actually appreciated that. You know, you read a lot of adult books, grown-up books, and they're kind of replete with gratuitous violence or sex or something like that. And, you know, you can kind of get numbing after a while, but this book was really kind of squeaky clean. There was barely any language in this book, nothing above, again, a PG level. Uh, there was no sex, uh, and it wasn't very violent. And I have to say, I kind of appreciated that because it shows that, you know, you can tell a story without having that in there. And I think maybe that's that I think that is a commendable aspect of this book is that it was kind of geared for all ages. Kind of now, again, the problems vastly outweighed the uh, the strengths of this book, but points where they're due. Uh, it was clean and it was, uh, you know. It didn't rely on gratuity like some other books of this ilk probably might. Um, also, this book was very, uh, um, very good at uh, female representation. This is a very uh, female-oriented story. Every main character of every story is female, and um, I, I like that. And there were done. It was done in a way that was not the way that a lot of films do it nowadays, where it's like you know girl boss, invincible, badass bitch. You know, it's not like that. These women were vulnerable. They did not make the best choices all the time. And that all of that, I will come back to that. Um, and they 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 were human. They were they were fallible. And I really like that because it gave us it gave us a great girl oriented story, but it did it in a human and relatable way that wasn't just like, you know, invincible, you know, superpowered women that like, have no weaknesses or flaws. It was it was very uh, well done in that regard, and I really did appreciate that. But coming back around to that point I made about people not making the best decisions, one of the worst aspects of this book is that the entire conflict almost behind it is driven by stupidity and you really don't want that because uh, it harkens back to like the old slasher movies of the 80s where there would really be no conflict if the characters weren't complete dumbasses uh this book really falls prey to that there there were so many times in this book where the characters made mistakes and decisions that were so glaringly obviously completely stupid that it was kind of mind-boggling how Darcy Coates thought this was like ex an acceptable way to advance the plot because the plot is not advanced uh, by anything except the, the stupidity of the main characters. Uh, if they would just be smarter, things would go a whole lot easier. But then again, we wouldn't have much of a story and uh, there were really just a lot of times in this book where the characters made decisions that were astoundingly insipid. And that is definitely a mark against it. And also, if you're going to write science fiction, you probably should, you know, make sure you have a really good grasp of, you know, science. Because uh, the way <laughs> that the aliens, that the, the parasites spread themselves in this book is kind of dumb. It says that they hitch rides on comets and asteroids that pass by whatever planet they're on. Okay, A, how? Because these aliens are just little black gooey things, like the Venom thing from Spider-Man. They're just little black gooey things that don't have any sensory organs. They don't have any technology of their own. How do they get onto passing comets and asteroids? B, them as some tough-ass aliens to survive the vacuum of space, boiling heat upon atmospheric entry, and an impact with the planet's surface that, depending on the size of the object they're riding on, probably has enough uh, 
power to rival a few dozen or hundred nuclear bombs. Them is some tough aliens, and, and C, if they're getting to different planets by asteroids and stuff that they're on, crashing into the planets, why do none of the humans ever, why are none of the human characters ever impacted by the impacts of the asteroids? Like, they're, they're, because so many, all of these stories take place on remote moon bases that are, like, on the fringes of the galaxy, and, like, if you're, base is getting bombarded that much by asteroids and comets, uh, you might want to think about relocating, but it's just never, like, it's not mentioned how that's, the, you know, asteroids apparently are crashing into to um, the, 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 the surface of the moon all the time, but yet nobody's affected by it or anything. It's just kind of dumb. I think it could have been thought out more, and I'm sure there were other uh, scientific things that people more knowledgeable on the subject than myself could probably pick apart, but that kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, but as I said, I did actually like this book. I don't know why. I guess just because it was so simple. I mean, it was really simple, uh, and it was just kind of so earnest. It just wanted to tell, you know, a nice, spooky little sci-fi horror story, and I think it failed mostly, but it was kind of endearing in its attempt, or at least to me, for some reason. So I kind of liked it. And as I said, the latter two novellas that comprise this book were markedly better than the first three stories that opened the book, because those were awful. It was just one story told three different times. Very boring, very rote, very predictable. That part wasn't good. But again, second half, it picked up, and the characters actually had a little bit more dynamism to them. They were a little bit more uh, well rendered. So it, it, like I say, it, it did get better and it kind of redeemed itself, but just barely. Um, so overall to rate Parasite by Darcy Coates, I'm going to give it a C minus. Like that's as high as I think I could, you know, justifiably rate this. Not good objectively, but I kind of liked it just as good, dumb, fun kind of. But uh I will give Darcy Coates another chance, I think, um, because she has a sizable bibliography, and I would think, you know, she might be, you know, fertile soil for some good spooky tales, maybe, if she has, you know, some some better stuff, some better stuff in her than this, because this was like, meh, okay at best, but maybe some of her other books are good, so I'll probably get, end up giving her another try. So, yeah, Parasite by Darcy Coates. Have you read Parasite? If you have, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it, whether you have agreed or disagreed with anything I've said about it here today. Um, also, if you've read any other books by Darcy Coates, let me know as well where I should go next, because like I say, I want to give her another chance. I, I have a rule, my personal rule with reading is I always like to read at least two books by any given author, if possible, uh, just to say that I gave them a fair shake. Um, so I'd like to read, you know, at least one more Darcy Coates book just to see if there's any improvement or if I just, you know, picked the wrong book to start with. So, yeah, give, let me know any suggestions you might have down in the comments. And as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to like, subscribe, help the channel out a little bit. I would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, peace.